You're listening to Breakfast Business with Vincent Wall and we're joined now by Lorcan Allen, Agribusiness Editor of the Irish Farmers Journal. Lorcan, you've been covering this story very closely for some time and in fact, you probably had to write it last night for this morning's edition of the Farmers Journal before the meeting of Kerry Co-op was formally over. But you basically write that the, the, the Co-op took a major step last night and has formally approved a very significant <coughs> uh, planned bid of €480 million Euro for a 60% stake in a new joint venture they're going to set up with Kerry PLC. Uh, good morning, Vincent. Yeah, it, it looks um, like like Kerry Co-op, um, this kind of heritage entity that w- would have been the original foundation of Kerry Group, um, and it's still very much alive today, but more as an investment thing that is kind of owned by farmers and some people who are um, formerly farmers, retired farmers, relations of farmers, and some outside investors as well. Um, but it looks like Kerry Co-op now is on the brink of tabling a, an official offer to, to Kerry Group PLC of four hundred and eighty million for their dairy business, and you know that will be one of the largest corporate transactions in Ireland if it goes ahead um, for uh, uh, in in the next year. And is it your understanding, Lorcan, that the, the board did formally agree to to submit that bid last night? Uh, oh, oh. The the as we went print last night for the farmers journal the meeting was ongoing but what uh, came out was that um, they had kind of almost agreed to uh, submit the bid but hadn't formally done it yet but I think it's only a matter of time now I think um, this these negotiations I suppose for context for your listeners Vincent these negotiations have been going on for over a year now between Kerry Group and Kerry Co op and um, the background of it is there was a kind of a um, a kind of a, a dispute between milk suppliers and Kerry and Kerry Group over um, milk pricing and that kind of thing, and it led to this sort of triggered these negotiations uh, I, I, with Kerry Group, kind of putting on the table the option for farmers to buy a sixty percent um, stake in this dairy business that they have, um, and like the the whole business is valued at eight hundred million. Farmers are being offered sixty uh, percent stake you, in it, so they're putting up four hundred and eighty million. I just said um, four hundred and eighty million, a huge corporate deal, even when it goes ahead. Lorcan, tell us the types of assets and and facilities that will be involved in this new joint venture. Sure. So, uh, Kerry's primary dairy business essentially they, they, they have three dairy processing sites uh, here in Ireland. You have Listole, uh, Newmarket, and Charleville. Um, and they also this also business also includes a dairy spreads business over in the UK and Austin and West Yorkshire. Um, it's thought that this business is basically a 1.2 billion turnover business. It has profits of 80 to 100 million euros a year. Um, it's a very large scale business. It's processing about 1.2 billion litres of milk a year, which makes it one of the big four dairy companies in, in Ireland up there, along with along with Lakeland, Columbia and, and Dairy Gold. Um, and importantly, I suppose from what products it makes, it's a very diverse business. It makes everything from your butter, uh, cheddar, um, uh, to a you know range of specialised proteins, and it has a big branded business as well. So you think of uh, dairy gold butter that you can buy in the shop, cheese strings, Lolo, those kind of things, Charleville cheddar, uh, those brands come with it. So it's thought that this business has a, a pretty healthy profit margin in it of maybe eight to ten percent, which will be attractive for farmers in terms of. Um, been able to pay themselves a better milk price if they sort of take control of this entity. It also could have other implications, uh, Lorcan, because it's likely that Kerry Co-op will sell at least 2% of their shareholding, of their 12.5% shareholding in Kerry PLC to raise the bones of the 500 million euro involved. And it could also accelerate the sale by Kerry PLC itself of its other elements of its consumer foods division. Uh, that that's correct, Vincent. I suppose to fund this, carry. I mean, it is a huge amount of money. So to fund this, it's likely Kerry Co-op is going to have to sell some of its shares that it holds in Kerry Group PLC. It owns about twelve percent of the shares in Kerry Group. And um, so if it if it uh, offloaded, uh, let's we'll say two percent of all the Kerry Group shares, um, it would raise about four hundred million euros, which would give them a good bit of money to uh, to, to to fund this transaction. Um, What's going from a Kerry Group perspective, the thinking behind this, I suppose it goes back since uh, Edmund Scanlon, the new CEO of Kerry Group, took over in recent years. Um, this transaction or joint venture deal with the co-op, if it goes ahead, it's, it's known as something called Project Seafield within Kerry Group. Um, and this is basically where they're looking at some of their heritage businesses and their lower margin businesses and their consumer food side. So the dairy processing element and the consumer foods business, uh, it would say in Ireland and the UK, where they own things like Denny sausages and um, other meat uh, businesses over in the UK, they're looking at exiting. They're, they're trying to develop exit strategies for those kind of lower margin businesses and very much pivot and focus, continue have their 100% focus on 
you know, that high margin, high growth area of taste and nutrition, performance nutrition. So this is part of a wider strategy in Carry Group to get out uh, of that consumer foods and dairy processing heritage businesses and um, the the Kerry farmer milk suppliers are kind of first in line here to giving them the opportunity to buy back the dairy processing and assets that they would have founded back in the seventies. And very briefly, you could Lorcan, there could be other implications as well for 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 the ta- for the exchequer. Uh, we won't get into the technical details, but it co- uh, dry dry shareholders in Kerry Co-op, those who are not actively supplying milk, could be encouraged to swap their Kerry Co-op shares for K- Kerry PLC shares in a deal with the revenue commissioners, which could be a huge bonanza for the exchequer. I'd say that probably the second biggest winner of all of this is going to be Pascal Donoghue and uh, the Minister for Finance and the tax man. Um, I mean, just even on, on rough calculations, if a third of the shareholders in Kerry Co-op, I'd say over half of the shareholders in Kerry Co-op are dry shareholders or non-farmers, um, kind of retired farmers, I would say that uh, if they take this kind of option, you're talking of a tax windfall here of 200 to 400 million for the exchequer. Because it basically, they, in, in swapping for Kerry PLC shares, there would be a, a capital gains element. Exactly. So that um, when, when it, the idea would be that I would hand in my uh, old co-op shares and in exchange, I would be given Kerry Group PLC shares, which are more liquid. And, you know, there's a growth opportunity there. And as part of that transaction, revenue have approved a deal where um, you would pay capital, a once-off capital gains uh, on the value of those shares. So Kerry Group shares are trading at €112 Euros this week. It's a fairly significant um, tax bill that's going to come for most people. So it's thought that part of this deal would be a cash plus shares deal for dry shareholders okay. to give them a way to pay their tax bill and hold on to their shares. OK, very interesting deal in many, many different ways. I want to keep an eye on Lurk and Alan, Agri-Business Editor of the Irish Farmers Journal. Thanks for joining us this morning, Farmers Journal. 